Recording in progress. Hey. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here shortly. Um, it's 8.58. In the chat, how y'all doing though today? How are y'all day, man, so far? Talk to me. Talk to me nice. Let's make it happen.com. Welcome all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the call. That's what's up, CB. That's what's up. I'm glad you had a good day. I hope all y'all had a great day. 8.59. We one minute away from the... You feel me? We, we one minute away from the... Hey, now. <laughs> we one minute away from the game, coach. I'm going to talk about some things that's going to help you guys understand trade inside this market. I see a lot of new faces. You know what I'm saying? A lot of new names that I've never worked with before. This is exciting right here. To see that we all here for the same purpose, right? I am uh, one of those trainers that actually like receiving feedback. So I may ask you, hey, drop a seven in the chat or drop whatever in the chat. It's just to bring the energy up on the call, right? I want to make sure that you guys are getting that proper information that you need. It's nine o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and stop the music. I'm going to give some people some time to hop on. But uh, let me move this box out the way. Go ahead and take this off. Okay, cool. If y'all can hear me quick, can I get a seven in the chat? Just, just one seven is cool for right now. Hey, now. Okay, cool beans. Cool beans. We here. We active. Okay, then. I, I see we awake. I know I got on real late last night, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It was like bedtime for real. We did uh, get some profits last night. This morning, I did a call. And we got some nice profits. I had the pleasure of meeting some other traders um, that are amazing, right? Now I'm going to kind of clear the line out, mute a little bit. That way I can get y'all some information. That'll be very helpful. So how many of us on here right now are new to trading? Or how many of us right now have had some success with trading but still confused? Like where are you at in your trading journey? There's no right or wrong answer. Nobody's here to judge you. But this is a part of the process that it takes to have success. You see, what I've realized, what my real lies is that we've been told real lies. Let me say that again. I've realized with my real eyes that we've been told real lies. Oh, trading is too hard. It's, it's this. It's that. You know how it goes. Let me get the line and read. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you know how it is, right? So when I realized that, I started to say, how can I get the result that I want and help people duplicate the same thing? I like to use TikTok as an example. Everybody on TikTok is pretty much doing the same exact thing, right? They're seeing somebody do a dance and then they're duplicating that dance. Why? Because they want that result. Now let's talk about trading. We should be duplicating somebody that is having success so we can duplicate their results. You see, growing up, they told us don't be a copycat, but here's the truth behind it. It's okay to be a copycat as long as you're copying the right cat. It's okay to be a copycat as long as you're copying the right cat. So if you got people that are showing you how to have success, we should be duplicating what they're doing so we could mimic the results. When it comes to trading, the reason I believe a lot of us have not had the success, we're confused, we're lost, it's because we have not been taught how to trade in a language that we understand. If I'm like, oh, Hey guys, so right here, this is the fair value gap. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, right? You can be like, yo, what are you talking about? I'm already confused as it is. So if I say fair value gap, if I say Fibonacci or whatever it is, it's going to confuse you even more. But if I give you a language that you can understand, 
you won't feel confused, you'll feel more confident, and you will be able to take more trades and have more profit, right? So I'm going to talk to you guys about trading in a way that you understand it. We're going to use real life situations. So when it comes to trading on the basic side, trading view is what we use. This allows us to look at the charts, see what we need to see. We can mark zones on this chart, put moving averages, AKA indicators on here. So it can help us see what we need to see. So this right side over here, this is price. So what this means is this number 15059.4. That's exactly where price is at. So if I know where price is at, my job is to figure out if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down. One big tip, just because you have money in your balance, that does not mean it's time to... Just because you have money in your account, that does not mean, oh, I got to trade. I got to be in a trade. It may not be the right time for you to plug in the trade. And that's why people lose. It's about being patient. Wait for what you need to see happen to happen first. So here's the price. On this left side, here are tools that you can use to help you identify places that you need to see inside. What I mean by that is, if I click this horizontal ray, this is going to help me use um, support resistance lines inside the market so I know where we can and may not go, right? So this is just a tool to help me see like zones like this. So I can say, oh, we came up here and came down to the bottom floor. So you see how this looks like a floor. This looks like a ceiling. This is the top. This is the bottom. This is the floor. This is the ceiling. Oh, this is oh, this is the ceiling. This is the floor. So think about this. If we break below this floor, what does this floor become? It becomes your ceiling. Hello. Gotcha, gotcha, I gotcha. So if we know that we have a ceiling and a floor, we're attempting to figure out if the market is going to bounce from this floor to go back to the ceiling or if it's going to break below this floor and go to the basement. That's literally what we're doing. When you're traveling from one place to the next, let's just say this is your starting port, a starting point, and you're at the airport, right? So you're here at the airport. This is your starting point. This is your destination. So if we're back here on this candle and we already touched the bottom line and did not break below it, we respected it. That means we stayed at the airport to catch our flight to, let's just say, since we got the special going on, Cancun. Right? And then we went from Cancun. I was trading with Miss Twana this morning. We went from Cancun back to the airport. AKA, we took the sale. It went down. When you can identify this, it makes it make sense. Here's one thing I want you to understand. Look for places where you see three or more candles in a row and then mark it. Let me check chat. Sure did. Hey, now. Look for places where you see one, two, three or more candles in a row and then mark it. One, two, three, four. That's three or more candles in a row. So I would take a horizontal ray, put it at the very bottom of this. This is my floor, and this is three candles in a row here. This would be my ceiling. 
So if we break above the ceiling, but come back down through the ceiling, which was our floor at this moment, right? Remember, we broke above it. So it's no longer our ceiling. We're in the attic up top. It's three candles in a row here. Let's mark it. Straight to the left, we can see history always repeats itself when it comes to trading, right? History always repeats itself when it comes to trading. Look at this line here. We've been here before. When we're here at this point, we sold. Christ came back to the same place that we came from. So let's just say, let's go here. Let's go to church. Let's say right here, we're at church. We left and came to the airport. Forget Cancun real quick. We came right back to church. So if we sold from here last time and we come back and don't break above it, that must mean we're respecting it and going to go back down to the airport again. It's always a potential. Right? It's always a potential. So these tools are going to help you See the chart and do your technical analysis outside of what Monera is, right? So with Monera, this is where it's about to get crazy. This is where it's about to get crazy. Um, let me pull up Monera real quick. I got my back office open. I don't need to show that. Anybody have any questions so far? Uh, if I'm going too fast or whatever, if I need to slow down, if you got questions, please ask them because I want to give you the clarity that you need so that way you can see what you need to see the way you need to see it. What I've understood in this game of trading, literally right now, I can give you everything that I use to trade. I can give you my strategy. I can give you my indicators. I can give you literally everything that you need. And you will potentially still lose heavy in the market. The only way that you will be able to trade like me is if you see the charts the way that I see the charts. And that's nothing against nobody, but that's it's perspective. Think about it. If I can see something and you can't see it, that means I'm going to take action way before you because you're going to you're like, what? I don't get it. I don't see it. But if we see the same thing, we're going to take the same trade. When we, were, when we were on a call this morning, we were seeing the same thing. So we were taking the same trades. And if you were confused about it, right, you ask questions. You see what I'm saying? So it's the same way. So I'm going to access Monero. Now, you see how I was on that trading view chart using indicators, right? Well, here on Monero, this is like, let's just keep calling it the cheat code. Let's just keep calling this the sauce. Where do we find Monero in the back office? Great question. So right here, let me just go back, back, forth, forth. You feel me? Let's, let's go back. So we're going to open up our back office. We're going to come to this left side, right? And right under where it say Forex, you come here, move your cursor over and tap on Monero. And right here it says access Monero, you just click it and then it's gonna pop up. Right? We cool so far? Everybody cool? No problem. I got you. I got y'all. I got us. We got us. Right? So here we're on the chart screen. This is showing us the pair. USD CHF. This is stands for this stands for United States dollar versus the Swiss franc. So what this means is the USD is first. I, I like I, I, I we had a tip over here. Okay. Let's go USD CHF. And let's spread this out real quick. So this can be. It makes sense for y'all. Call this the base. 
I don't want to be too difficult. They cross the road. I like to use simplicity, right? So, there we go. Got my first parenthesis here. So, we can see this here. We're on USDCHF. Look straight to the right. This is the 15 minute time frame. That means every candle on this chart represents 15 minutes. And somebody tell me in the chat what every candle on this chart represents. Because this is a key part of trading. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, absolutely. Every candle represents 15 minutes. So if you are, listen to this clearly, if you are plugging in a trade off of the 15 minute time frame or any time frame that you're on, it can take increments of that time frame for the trade to play out to get to its destination. What do you mean by that, Keith? Well, let's say we're up here at this point. This is 15 minutes. This next candle, 15 minutes, 15, 15, 15, 15, and so forth. So it can take increments of 15 minutes to get to the destination down here before the trade plays out before you get to Cancun from the airport. Does that make sense so far? So if we're on a 30 minute time frame, every candle represents 30 minutes. If we're on a four hour time frame, every candle represents four hours. So if we talk while we're on this four hour time frame, that means that, let me take this off. It can take four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and so forth hours for that trade to play out. So the reason why people potentially lose from my perspective is because they're not patient enough to understand, hey, I made this trade, the whatever time frame, I need to allow this allotted time to go by before I just plug into the trade, before I just get out the trade, before I scare myself out the trade, right? So you want to understand, yep, I'm on I'm on a one minute time frame, so it can take minutes before my trade play out. Ah, I'm on a daily time frame. It can potentially take days, weeks for my trade to play out. You have to adapt to each mindset on each time frame that you're on. And a lot of us, we have to understand those who have traded before. You have made mistakes, meaning you have bad habits that have to be broken. And you may be looking at that as a, as a bad thing. Like, oh, you know, I didn't have success before in the past, so I'm not going to do this no more. Here's the truth. At one point of your life, you did not know how to walk. Mm-hmm. And you learned how to walk. Mm-hmm. At one point of your life, you did not know how to talk. And you learned how to talk. So if you can learn how to do those things, then don't limit yourself and tell yourself that you can't do something that you can just by putting your mind to it. And after you put your mind to it, you put your grind to it. If you don't take action, you cannot bring the cash in. Right? right. That's the key to call tonight. No, no action, no cash in. Okay? No action, no cash in. So you have to do some type of work. Think about it. When I was in 2014 at my last job, I was in a call center. And I remember taking calls. That was my work. When I got off of work and I was trying to build my business, how many of us have realized sometimes that we just sit on this computer on Facebook or on our phone and just sit there and scroll? We get caught. We get caught on reels. We get caught on stories we get caught on people's statuses we want to comment and and be seen on everybody else's posts that don't matter about what we're trying to do with our life we get distracted easy this is why i don't watch television i tell a vision it's different it's a distraction if you can literally just 90 days go harder than you ever have if you don't understand something about forex Show up and show out every single day. 
Sacrifice. It's going to take time to understand what you need to get that. Give me one second. I'm echoing. Hey, man. All right, we're good. So if you can tell yourself I can versus I can't, you took the first step. How many of us on here really believe that we can actually have success in the Forex market? Let me get a seven in the chat. It's 23 of us on here. So 22 should say yes. We should have a seven in the chat. Sometimes we get so worried about what other people got to say about us. Forget what people have to say about us. They're going to talk anyway. Give them a reason on why, yo, you know what? You need this software. Here's why. Let's see, let's see if the market is moving on Bitcoin right now. Let me see if it's moving on Bitcoin. I don't even have a check, so I got to manually check it since the market is moving. And then after this part, I'm actually going to pull up my actual phone. I'm going to show you all how to plug trading. Talk about MetaTrader 4 and so forth. How to log in. What the broker is and so forth. So, oh, this is lit. It might be a celery with no ranch happening. So right here on this veneer, I'm looking at this left side. Technical indicators is just neutral. It's just showing these little zones, right? The trend, it's a weak trend, meaning it's potentially going up a little bit or potentially going down a little bit, right? The Gartley, this is a pattern. Do I know what it is? No, I do not. I am a trader and I do not know what this is. Okay, I really don't. That don't mean I can't trade. I just need to know what it's telling me to do. So let me click show. And it's going to show me what to do. So if we can see this right here, it gave us the stop loss, the entry, take profit one, take profit two, and both of them got smashed. I didn't have to know what the Gartley was. Here's another powerful thing. I didn't have to talk to a single soul. I didn't have to jump out my comfort zone. Hey, I got this opportunity that, you know how it goes? This is a skill that once you learn it, nobody can take it away from you. This is a skill that you can earn while you learn because you got to sit, you have a personal assistant in your pocket. I tested this out last week and in three days, I was able to, I told Tiffany, I said, yo, I'm going to put $10 in the account just using this system. And I said, I'm going to record the journey. I took $10 to over $200. And then I said, you know what? This is crazy. This is the secret sauce. This is the marinara sauce with spaghetti because I'm going to eat. Right? I'm going to eat. The whole goal is to eat. So why complain at the plate full? We all got a life that we're living, but we all want something out of life. We have to put that work in so everything can work out. We have to put the work in so everything can work out. But it's up to you as an individual. Seriously, it's, it's, it's up to you. It's nobody else's fault. If you don't take this trade, guess what? It's your fault. Guess what? If you take the trade, it's your fault. If I say, yo, get into BTC USD for the buy and you plug in, it's your fault. If you win that trade, it's your fault. If you lose that trade, it's your fault. So what I'm saying is, no matter who your sponsor is, no matter who your next door neighbor is, all the action that you take along your journey, rather it's binary or Forex, it's on you. Accountability is one of the toughest thing to take when it comes to trading because it's like, oh, I lost that because the, the, the broker just wanted me to lose. No, they... Yes, they want you to lose, of course. But you just lost because you just entered the trade at the wrong time. That's it. Nobody, and, and forget, again, from my perspective, nobody's really wrong when it comes to trading. It's just you got into the trade at the wrong time. How many times have we been trading and we knew that the market was going to go somewhere, but it didn't go there immediately. We rushed the process versus trusting the process and then it went in our direction after it blew our account. That is my biggest downfall. Come on, somebody. I know what time it is. We I all... have my, my my biggest downfall is being patient. Oh yeah. 
It's like I always trying to rush into the trade. The next thing you know, like, uh, and then I end up getting out and then I just lose the money I was putting in and then reverse in the way I needed to go. Mm. Yeah. Let me ask and you it this. happened multiple times. Let me ask you this. How many times have you looked at the chart? And this is for everybody too, but just think about it. How many times have you looked at the chart and you knew you were supposed to get out of the trade, but you just sat there and watched it and let it blow? Oh, oh plenty of times. <laughs> Like it's a part of the process. And, and the thing about it, like, I'll probably say I get in a trade at night and I know it's going in that direction. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm in profit. But then I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like, yo, you should go ahead and get out of this trade. You done already made your money. Don't get greedy. Then you start seeing something different. And the next thing you know, it goes in the opposite direction because you at work and you didn't get it. You didn't put a stop loss. So now you in trouble. So it doesn't happen multiple times. Absolutely. So we are in control of our results, y'all. Um, in regards to the Hero FX, you didn't get your credentials. Um, when you log in, I, I don't use Hero FX, but it's pretty much like the same broker. When you log in, go to account details and just create another um, trading account and see if it sends you that. If not, just send them a chat, okay? And if that don't work, um, send me a personal message and I'll, I'll help you um, get that situated. I also have, uh, I'll be posting a video to show y'all how to transfer to your broker, withdraw from your broker and so forth. It's all the same process. So we're going we're gonna to make sure y'all good. But so far right now with the target entry stop loss with Monero, we're, we're good with that, right? Everybody good so far with Monero? Let me make sure I miss nothing in the chat real quick. Yes. Cool beans and spaghetti. Hey, now. All the time. Yep, yep. Cool. So if we know that AI is going to scan the market for us, if we know that it's going to pretty much have our back, why not use it to our advantage? We got to understand that it's time to operate different. We we have the chance to really take lead on our life right now. This is this is the opportunity of abundance. I need you to understand that. Every last one of you guys that are on this call, those who are watching, that's going to watch the replay, this is your chance to get the life that you have always wanted. And it's just going to require some action from you. That's the sacrifice. What's the win, ah, what's the win rate for the AI? That's a great question. Let me answer that for you. So, Ms. Stacy, honestly, it depends on the individual who is using the software. And this is why I say that. I have my own indicator on Monero, right? And if I see something that I need to see, I'm going to plug in. But somebody else may plug in too early. They may use too high of a lot size and lose the trade that we just won. So everybody's trading style may be different. And I can say, oh, I lost seven trades out of 10, but I still won $300. Does that make me a bad trader? But what if somebody said, yo, I won nine trades out of 10, but then they're not in profit. Maybe they're nine trades that, they, maybe eight, maybe nine trades that they took was only like a dollar profit, but the trade that they lost was $30. So it like this thing that we call Forex, it, and it's so much to it. We're going to do a lot more calls on this, but people will make things seem like it's something when it's not. Oh, you use all these, you use all this stuff for your chart. Like if that's what it takes for you to understand it the way that you need to understand it, then use it. Forget what they're saying. If you got to use Monero to get a trade to help you with your entry and target, and they're going to talk crap about it, so what? It's helping you get profit. But trade smart. Use the smart lots, uh, use the smart lot size. Be patient. Wait for it to cross entry. Wait for you to see what you need to see before you plug into the trade. A lot of us rush the process. We rush into the trade like, oh, well, Monero just gave it to me. Look, uh, Monero just gave it to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and risk my whole account. Don't do that. Because every time you do that, you give yourself a chance to go back in your pocket and fund your account again. We're not trying to take money out of your pocket. We want to put money in your pocket. But it's a process to understand. Trading can be addicting. It can help, it can not help. Well, it can help you increase your income, but it can also have you in a, a mindset of greed. 
Hey, Keith, can I interject yeah. for a minute? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to like share with you. Um, I added Bitcoin under the notifications and it just sent a notification. But you know you got to add it manually, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. you taught me that. See, I, I learned from Miss Tawana this morning. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You told me you sent settings. Wait. No, nope. go to the next one. Go to watch list. <laughs> <laughs> and add. Add. See where it says add symbol? Put Bitcoin in there. There you go. Now, now it'll watch it watch. You're going to have to add the indices in there too, because sometimes they don't pick them all up. That's so why. Can... Okay. Thank you. Come on, somebody. Can I get a seven in the chat for Miss Twanda, please? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Word. <laughs> I want you to understand. Man, listen, that's power. Look, I'm always a student too, Miss Twanda. Man, you've been giving me gems all morning. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we a team. One team, one dream. That shows you, y'all, like you don't have to know everything about it because somebody may know something that you don't know, but when you put that together, you know, they, they say when two or more are gathered, right? And we don't got to take it all the way there, but realistically, when when people with the same mindset on the same frequency, frequency with the same energy get on the same call and they put their minds together and they're grinding together, oh my God, they shine together. And that's what this team is. But along this process of us getting to that end goal of what we want, y'all, we're going to deal with stuff. Right? That's why I didn't run track in high school. I knew I was going to have hurdles in life that I would have to jump over, so I saved my energy. You're going to have hurdles that come up. That don't mean quit your business. I did that too many times. I quit too many times. I know what quitting felt like, but what does success feel like if I keep quitting? I'll never know. Don't yep. So if you, if you refresh it, it should give you that last one I got. Hopefully it will. So you can probably show them the example you want to show them. Is it? Okay. I don't know why it does this to me. It did this to me earlier too. I see. Yeah, I got one Bitcoin. I hope yours come up. Let me see. Let me try to refresh on this screen. All right, yes. It's no bueno. Yeah. It's probably going to hit me on the next one. Yep, that's true. You missed it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Let me check chat. might be a question. How can you take things out the watch list you don't want to see? Great question. Let's find out together. So click watch list. Oh, so it's right here. Just click trash. Hey, now, come on, somebody. Where you can also uh, unclick Forex major so you don't have all the pairs on there and just add the pairs you only want to see. Mm. And you could go to settings and hand select them. Mm -hmm. Under monitor, under monitor, go to monitor. Wait, 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 wait. At the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monitor here. Go to security, and then That's you can hand select them all and deselect them. Hey. No, they don't have Bitcoin on it. That's why we had to go add it under notifications. So any pair that's on that the out. watch list, any pair that's on the watch list, it automatically will notify you when it's a setup. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. uh, under monitor, you can hand select your forex and your indices and your metal commodity, but underneath notifications. If you put it where he put that Bitcoin at, it's going to specifically roll those into your monitor. So that's what I found out. Nice. It's real, yep, it gets real specific. So you're still going to get all this other stuff, but you're going to really get what you want under monitor when you hand select it. So that's the good thing about it. Oh, yeah, this is about to be game changing. Like, it's still... I put the Bitcoin symbol, but it doesn't. I mean, I put Bitcoin and NAS right now. NAS came up, but not Bitcoin. It's not it's like it's not finding the correct symbol. Yeah. Go back to your notifications. Which I'm at. Under the watch list. The yeah. Bitcoin and says add symbol. Right. B BTC slash USDT. Write the word Bitcoin out and see if it start populating. 
Um, let me join here from my phone real quick so I can show y'all the teeth. No, 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 it doesn't populate with anything. Yeah, he just added it. Um, so if you type the word, uh, what do you have it under? Okay, so there. Do you have it already saved or you yeah. never saved? You should have it saved. I right. should have it for you, Angel. I'm thinking you have it as BTC USDT, but I never get the notifications for it. I've had it on there since Monday. I just got one tonight when I added it in. You know you could go and search, right? So, so now that you have it added, go right there to the um the input. Mr. Tom, are you on your uh, computer? Yeah. Uh, I'm about to just let you control my screen. I don't input. I right, click your mouse for me and then move my screen. Like what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you said, <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where input was at. So you see where it says E U R O? Just let me do it? No. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave you the, the screen or I gave you my screen. All right, let's see some B, T, C. Um, U S D. Can you see them little words? So usually, when you hit it right there, it will typically um, show up the last Bitcoin. I just got one when I interrupted you. Yeah, I typed out BTC USD and it blank screen, just like you're showing right now. Okay. Oh, because you're in a notification setting. You got to get out of the notification setting. I did notice that. It won't come up if you're in the notification setting. I think I think you got to go should. through. It should. Uh, if I put NAS up there or anything, it usually gives me the last signal that it called out. So like right now, if I were to show you, let me look again. If I were to show you my screen, I got a notification Bitcoin and it's um a buy on a one hour. Nas works fine. It's a Bitcoin that won't populate. Yeah. Same thing with US 30. You want me to show my screen? Um yeah, you can. That's fine. I'm a, uh I got you. No, right, US 30 is on there. Yeah. Then I'm gonna hand it back to you. <laughs> All right, I got you. Hey, now let me see screen. All right, it's all yours. Okay, just a quick tip. So I'm gonna show you what I was talking about because sometimes visuals are a little bit easier. Does everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. So see, I'm under notification. And you see Bitcoin? It popped up. It was at was it 9:20? I think that was that time. 21, right? Hour. Yeah, so, right. So see how it popped up on mine, but on my watch list, my computer moving real slow might be because I got a lot open. See how I had to add all these symbols in order to get them because for whatever reason, I wasn't really getting indices and I just added crypto uh, just now. But um, now, as soon as I added it, I got the signal. So maybe it's just not time for a signal to come out, but that's how I um, I added it. Maybe it needs the uh, forward slash in the middle. Like I'm unsure. No, I got it set up just. I have it set up just like you do. The NAS came through. The US thirty came through, but not Bitcoin. I have a question. So where are we receiving these? So signals is at? is it isn't it this? BTC USD. Yep, that one. Yeah, it doesn't show up on my notifications, even if I refresh the screen. Okay, because you see how I put it in the search and it came up? Yeah, so, which... Angel, we'll look at yours. Yeah. We'll look at yours after the call and see what's going on with no you. Problem. No problem. The same thing. Okay, so I'm going to hit it anyways, and then, you know, you can yep. see the example that um, Keith was making. So right everywhere. here on this screen that she got pulled up, you see, it created the pattern that we want. It gave the stop loss entry and targets, but price is not at the entry yet. So that means we got to be patient. It's on the hour time frame. 
So it can take hours before this trade is even ready to be entered. That's right. Oh, it gave us an entry. So let me just go ahead and enter now. You're going to be in drawdown like crazy. And if you look at the tag, right, I'm going to open it back up, the tag, it will clearly tell you where to enter. It says between this number and this number. So if you forget, you can still see when to enter and what TP you want to take and your stop loss. So everything is on this ticket. Oh, yeah. I have a question about notifications. So in this case here, would you put a buy limit then if you wanted to just let it activate on its own? You can, but if, if that, so that's more advanced. This is more so for a basic call. Okay. Buy limits, yes, you can do that. But for the newest person, we're just going to have them wait till it gets to entry zone and then plug in that trade. I heard, Major, you got a question about notification? Yes. Yeah, so, um, where do exactly we receive the notification for the trade? Like, is it in the Telegram or something, or is it on here? Both. Oh, okay. So you can have your Telegram. Um, your Telegram, it pulls up in your Telegram also. And let me tell you, I have to mute it. It's so many <laughs> coming through on Telegram. But if you want to get it on Telegram, you got to subscribe through here, the Telegram bot. Nice. Right. Is that that telegram is in the Monero screen and not in, in any other place in your back office? Because I've been looking for that and I haven't been able to see it. Yeah, from what I understand, this isn't right here, the telegram, right? And then when you hit it, there's gonna be instructions on what you do. So the, like for example, as soon as you connect with it, let me make sure I'm telling y'all everything correctly i think you got to put the word hold on for a minute uh, monera fx so that activates the bot and so one of the very first things you're going to do the bot going to tell you what to do it's going to say type the word alert for slash in and what it's going to do is yeah so let me tell you all this part this is real important Keith, I don't mean to take over. Oh, no, you man, you in good hands like all state. One team, one dream. Okay. So, yes, when you hit this alert that you see on my screen at the bottom, you're going to hit it, but then it is going to prompt you. So one of the things you're going to need is you're going to follow the instructions. It's going to tell you to put the word alert in, and then it's going to ask you for your account ID. Your account ID, if everybody can see my screen, is right here under account. So as soon as you click the word account, there's your authentic, um, authenticated token. You're gonna need yours. This is mine. You're gonna need yours. So that's really important to start the bot. So if somebody wanna try to do it while we're on, it may be easier to have everybody kind of walk through that because that's the way you could get the telegram. And what's nice about on telegram, is it will give you a signal and it'll still show you this chart that okay. I just have pulled up. I, I can, um, I guess I can set mine up right now in real time. All right, so notification. And if everybody wanna walk along with it and then I could probably answer, I'm already set up, so I'm going by memory. But if you click on this telegram. All right, so can you walk me through it like I'm a newbie, please? Uh-huh, you're right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what happened when you clicked it? Because oh, I already I'm gonna share my screen and then show I'm gonna show you. Oh, okay. Let me um I'll um I'll stop sharing. I'll walk you through it though. Um quick question to Wanda. So I'm What's I'm it? logged into my I'm logged into my back office but I don't see the option that Keith was referring to on the left-hand side for Forex. I don't even see that to get into Monero. Have you, um, have you got the elite package yet? Have I got what? Have you got the elite package? Yes. I purchased it on Monday. Yeah, it definitely should be popping up. That's weird. So, She's looking for, so you're in your back office and you're looking for what again? A Forex tab. Oh, you don't even have a Forex tab at all? 
No, the last one I have is support. It stops at support, but there's no tab for Forex. So you're telling me between crypto and stock, you have nothing? So I don't, I, I'm missing quite a bit then. I have home tools, orders, profile settings, and support. That's it. Are you logged on? Are you um, as a prospect or are you legitly signed up? I'm legitly signed up. Oh, that's a support issue. As soon as you sign up, you should have all those tools on the left that um, Keith is showing you. So yeah, I would send a chat to them either here or I would click on support. Well, nope, never mind. Add free live chat to this right? uh, Yeah, I will go, yeah, live chat Monday through Friday. And maybe try refreshing your screen or your browser. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a fix, but. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yours should look just like his screen. Yeah, I think that's probably what threw me off all because I've been checking all week and I'm like, why is I'm missing quite a few things? I'm not following what's what's going on. I did actually put in a ticket because I was trying mm -hmm. to get into the telegram and apparently it says that there's a WhatsApp team. So I submitted information for that. I still haven't seen anything from WhatsApp. Is there a WhatsApp team? Um, international or a WhatsApp. It's a, is there a WhatsApp group, I should say? Are you international? No, I'm in the U.S. Okay, because I know WhatsApp, WhatsApp usually use the international team for communicating um, because of the time difference. But yeah, that sounds like a support issue. So we're going to have to table you, but maybe take down these instructions so that when they help you, then this part will be easy for you. Okay. Yeah. Keith, go ahead and get your account before you start all that because you're going to, nope, up top. Click account, yeah, and get your authentic, that authenticate with code. I can't say that to save my life. I got you. <sighs> Click the Telegram bot. Boop. Yeah, let's start. I got to go by memory, yep. Okay. Yeah, it's going to, it should. Oh, hit start. Uh, Got to put the word alert somewhere, but I thought start would have um, prompted you. So hold on, let me. Because it gave me, it gave me instructions. So let me see if, uh, if there's some more instructions behind. Hey, now let me check the chat. I see. Put a, oh, okay, what, do I just put regular alert? Or use the uh, the slash. I think do an alert and for for slash. I'm trying to go by memory because my it gave me hands on what to do. Yeah, then so put the word alert and then put a forward slash. Oh, there you go. There you go. I need everybody to close their eyes real quick while I put my email address now. It's like nah. Ah. That's that token. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's the process right there. That's it. And then now when the market opens, oh, told you I had to mute it. Everything you see coming in notifications on Monera is going to come to your phone. All of that. That's all coming to your phone now. The nice thing about it is you don't have to sit near a computer. You know, mm -hmm. you can literally, you know, I wish I could show y'all what it looked like, but it literally, you know, comes across as a, um, let me see if I can show y'all what it looked like real quick. Let me see if I pull it up. I got mine successfully set up. Appreciate you. You did it? There you go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up MT4 and uh, kind of go over that real quick. How to how to enter trades and uh, yeah. Well, you all have a good evening. I gotta run, but um, you know I'm here if you got any more questions. I appreciate you. All right, y'all have a good evening. All right, you too.
All right, y'all. So let me go ahead and share the screen here on the mobile phone. If this is going to work correctly. <laughs> I'm on the phone with it. You know what I'm saying? All right. So y'all can see the screen. Yes. All right. Cool beans. So on here, let me click on participant. I need to go on here really quick and mute. One second. Okay, there we go. So on MT4, this is what we use to trade. This is how we plug in the trades. This is how we put the stop loss, the entry, the target, right? All of that great information. So here, this is your quotes screen, right? So on this screen, this is where you want to look at the pairs that you're potentially wanting to trade. This is simple. It's just showing you the price, the highest and the lowest point. And when you go to advanced, it gives you a little bit more information. So on advanced, left, can y'all see where it says spread? It's right under the pair. So AUD, CAD, and right under it, spread. it says 24. What that means, it's a two pip spread when you plug into the trade, meaning when you plug into the trade, you're automatically going to be negative two movements in the market. So if you're doing $10 a movement, as soon as you plug in, you're going to be negative $20. If you're doing a dollar, it's going to be negative $2, right? I can't, I got to, let me, let me, I got to mute this. Boom. Let me just mute the lines. Let's hear background noise. It's cool beans. So. Going back, um, can you mute your mic for me, please? It's making me echo. So the spread, think about football, right? You you know the shotgun position, like when, when the quarterback is not right up on the person with the football? Okay, Tony, what is your, what is your say? Have you logged into your broker as of yet? And why she answering that? So think about, I need broker advice without recommending any particular one. Which do you use? I use Hank of Trade and NVFX. Get with your, whoever your sponsor is, um, get with them and see what, what broker they use and they can send you the link to the broker. Hey, I got another question about the alerts, if you don't mind. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so where will I, once I got it set up, you know, do the alert thing on the Telegram thing, where will it alert me uh, on the trade, like Telegram? Yeah, so it's going it's to pop up in Telegram. All right, baby. Okay, so pocket option is for binary. This is the Forex side. Um, after the call, send me a message, I can help you get it. Get it uh, situated. Tony. So all these have different spread numbers. So the spread on the top one is two, four. Ignore the four. Ignore the last number, right? So on an AUD CHF, it's one spread, not 14. On AUD JPY, it's two, not 21, right? So what that means is, again, you're just going to be that much in the negative when you plug in. So those that be having like three pip spreads, like the one at the bottom, what was the last part? Oh, I said, just send me a message and I can help you get a, uh, get a broker and get set up. That way you can see this. So let's just say we clicked on the AUDCAD. It's gonna give us trade, which when we click on trade, 
it takes us to the screen where we can actually plug in a trade. Nope, it's no recommended one. I, every broker, well, a lot of brokers have different spread amounts. So some brokers may have like seven pips spread before you plug into a trade. And that's like ridiculous, you feel me? So these ones that got low spreads is cool. So right here, at the very top, you got the pair, AUD, CAD. Below that, you have market execution. That means plug me into the trade right now. You got the buy limit. The buy limit will go over that later. That's some advanced stuff. Sell limit. That's something that we'll go over later. That's some advanced stuff. Buy stop and sell stop. Same thing. It's some advanced stuff. So we'll talk about that. Below that, it's where it says 0.01. That is the price that you are telling the market that you want to enter the trade with. So a 0.01 looks like one cent. Inside the Forex market, it's 10 cents per movement. So for example, if we look at the number to the left at the bottom above the sell by market, it says 0.88817, right? Ignore the seven and look at the 81. So if that number from 81 changed to 91, that would be considered 10 pips. Does that make sense? From 81, so if it goes 0 0.88812, to 0 0.8891, that's 10 pips. That went up, not down. From 81 to 91, that's up. From 81 to 71, that's down. So let's say I hit sell. That means I believe the market is going to go down. But remember, in our example, we said it went to 91. So we would be down 10 pips. So based off of 0 0.01, I will be down $1. Now, if I sold, and it went to 0 0.8871, I would be up $1. If I want to risk more, I just click on it, erase the one and put two. Now it's 20 cent per movement, 30 cent per movement, 50 cent per movement. Somebody that has never traded before, what do you think this one is? So if 0 0.01 is 10 cent, what do you think 0 0.10 is in the market? $1. Absolutely. $1 in the market. So now you're risking $1 per movement. So if it went from 8.1 to 9.1 and you were in profit, you will be up $10 versus just $1. If we do a 1.00, that's $10 per movement. So when you see people having a lot of success, and you see they're making thousands with the same trade you're taking. The only difference is the balance that they have and the lot size that they used. If we take the same trade and you put a 1.00, but then I plug in, I do a 0 0.01, and we, uh, we both get out at 8891, we both won the trade, you won $100, I only won $1. People are going to look at you like you did better when realistically we did the same thing. You just risked more. You had more to risk. That's the only difference. The stop loss. So when Monero says stop loss, you just click on it and you plug the numbers in. Whatever it is. Take profit. Same thing. Whatever that number is printed out on Monero, you just type it into here. And then hit sell or buy. If, if it says entry and then your target is below you, you know you're going for the sale. If it says entry and your target is above you, you're going for the buy. That's what the trade screen is for. So I'm, I'm still in a negative off of a trade. I left the trade open. I don't, I already know where the market going. So here, after you tap on it again, you also can go to the chart screen. So chart. This screen right here is going to help you identify what the market is doing. The top left is telling you that you're on a one minute time frame. Look directly to the right from that. 
This is a cursor. Is it gonna let me use the cursor? Oh, it is. Sorry, I thought I heard earlier that we shouldn't just take Monero trades that big. Great question. So you, it depends on the individual who's taking the trade. Because again, everybody may see something different. Should you just take the trade? No. If you understand how to trade, can you take it? Potentially, yes. But you want to make sure you see what you need to see before you just take the trade. Don't just like, so what they're saying is don't just, oh, I just got a signal and then just plug in. It's, oh, I just got a signal. Let me see what the market is doing to see if the trade is ready first before I take the trade. You see what I'm saying? So here, I'm on the one minute time frame. Here's the cursor. I don't know why it's like super dark, but you can see the little thing moving. The F, this is for the indicators. So if I wanted to add an indicator on here, I will come here. And let's just say I did a moving average. Let's say it's a 10, hit done, boom. Now that red line is on my chart. So let me make it thicker so y'all can see it. I know I just went fast. I'm gonna go back to it. So right here, we all can see that red line. Right? So that's how you add indicators to your chart. The square circle triangle thing, that's objects. So like if you want to add a horizontal line, you just click that and then tap on your screen. And now that horizontal line is on your chart. So this will help you identify support resistance. Now, remember what's talking about when you see three or more candles in a row, you want to mark it. So here, boom, we got this right here, three candles in a row. Look to the left. Over here, we got three candles in a row. So we mark that zone. If we wanted to get an arrow or whatever, like whatever indicator or object that we need, we just go there for it. That's the chart screen. Then you got your history. Then you got your settings. Then you got your trade screen. The trade screen just shows you the trades that you're in. I'm down $67. Am I worried? No, I know where the market going. I'm just showing you it's real. I hold trades. I know what time it is. And you can't get afraid. Oh, I'm down $60 on a trade. I'm risking a lot of money. I'm risking $3. So if I'm, I'm risking $3 per movement. So if it goes negative $10, I mean 10 pips, I'm negative 30. If it's down 20, I have a higher lot size because I'm holding this trade long term. So this is not a quick trade. So therefore, in the midst of my trade, it's going to go negative. It's going to go positive too. If I would have waited, but the trade is a higher time frame trade. Remember how I was talking about if you enter a trade on a four hour time frame, it can take four, eight, 12, 16, 20 potential hours. But because the market is closed on Sunday when it opened back up, my money will start moving again. But I already knew it was going to take days for both of these trades to play out. So I'm okay with where I'm at. So that's what MT4 is. Just a basic look over it. You know what I'm saying? So when you're ready to plug in trades, you can go to the chart and hit trade and it pulls up the same screen and we plug in the information. If we want to change pairs at the very top, click it. Change the pair. If we want to add a pair, go to the quote screen. At the very top right, it's a plus sign. Hit the plus, and then you can hit Forex and hit the green plus sign to add one of these pairs. You can go back, CFD, see what's in here. Metals, see what's in here. Crypto, see what's in here. And you can search uh, as well. So if, so if you see a pair, oh, trade USD MXN, and then you just type in USD MXN, it added on. And when you add it, it gets added to the very bottom of your quote screen. So, so you see Bitcoin down here at the bottom, it's added. I can go to chart and I can see what price is doing right now. But the market is closed for this broker, so therefore I cannot look at what the market is doing. 
So this is a basic, oh, how you plug in a trade, stop loss, take profit, what the quote screen is, spread, real basic stuff. What does the M1 stand for on the top left? Great question. One minute chart. So every candle on here represents one minute. If we go to the M5, every candle represents five minutes. So now every candle represents five. Over here, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. That's a great question too. What time frame should you look at? It depends on your trading style, right? I have students that some of them look at the daily, the four hour, and the weekly. I don't really care for the weekly time frame. I have a JG Wentworth mentality. It's my money. I need it now. <laughs> so I'm scalping. I'm, I'm getting in and getting out. But sometimes there are trades that I will hold long term. Oh, my screen just cut. Off. Oh, that's cool. I don't need it. Let me exit the Zoom from here. Let me claim the host. One second. I believe it's this one. Give me one second. I'm going to the. Anybody have any other questions while I'm getting off of this? This one is the host. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'm the host now. Please. Yes. How many trades should we focus on if we are beginners? That is a great question. I said that to every question, huh? That just sound like repetitive. <laughs> but when you're asking that question, it depends on you because your, your trading style can be different. I scalp, so it's going to be more trades available for me than somebody who's um, swing trading, holding a trade for a long, holding a trade for a longer period of time. I would say honestly, just go for like two trades a day. No, I'm talking about basically pairs, like oh pairs. Yeah, I have a few that I like. Recommended, like maybe two, three pairs. But if you focus on one pair and learn the movements, mm -hmm. you're gonna know the movements that that trade makes, so you know what to. Tell. What I what I like to tell people is, and hit, hit us out. Rather than always, let me let me share the screen. Rather than always just physically taking the trade, when a trade is playing out, mentally take it. Watch it happen. The reason why is because you want to program what the market is doing because. Growing up, they always told us history always repeats itself. And it happens all the time in the charts. So if you visualize what the market is doing over and over and over again, and you program yourself to see how the move is happening, then you already know what's expected. Sometimes I would just sit on a chart and just watch the trade play out to see if I knew what it was going to do. Even though I want to plug in so bad, but the opportunity will come back around. So like, if you don't have a lot in your account, I do not highly recommend NAS 100 or US 30. You can trade like, a, like new people can trade like an EUR USD. It moves real slow, it's very smooth. And when it's going in its direction, it goes in its direction. So, I know I, I don't had you for an hour. If y'all still good, we can keep going. I don't mind. As long as y'all are understanding it, I'm cool. Ooh, I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Um, the, when you receive the notice from uh, or the trade signal from Manila in your trading group, right? And it says uh, GDP goes to 30 minutes, my friend, bullet. Mm -hmm. Are we to 
set our time zone to 30 minutes before we end the show? Does that make a difference? So the, depending on where, so her question was, if it was a trade on GBP JPY on a 30 minute time frame, and it started getting choppy a little bit, will we wait 30 minutes before we plug into the trade? Is that what, is that what you asked? No, would you take it to the 30 minute time frame? Oh, Got you. So I, I, I would not. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, the reason why I say because why would you just jump in on a 30 minute time frame? Because it might go in the opposite direction on a lower time frame. So basically, if you drop down on your lower time frame and see what direction is going in, then that's when you make a decision to get in probably on a five minute or a 15 minute time frame. And it really depends on you. But make sure you know what you're doing before you get in. Yep. And then remember what we was talking about this morning, utilizing that indicator that helped you see where you are inside the move for when it's ready. So when we cross that entry line, we know it's time to enter that trade. You see what I'm saying? And y'all, what I'm yeah. telling her is, I, what I'm telling her is, I don't want to make it sound like I'm holding secrets type, type situation. I had show her the TDI indicator. Now I know this looks crazy. Let me just take the extra extra read all about it off. I showed her the indicator right here, and this already lets me know at this present moment this was my entry, or actually this was my exit from this buy. Like I already know. So I would have exited this, this buy right here. So I, this indicator lets me know exactly where I am inside the move. So I put Monero next to this and I know exactly when to enter. I know why to enter. But again, when you're trading higher time frame trades, like if it's a 30 minute time frame, it can take increments of 30 minutes for the trade to play out. That's why, for example, when I was showing my trades, I have one that's negative $60 because it's a higher time frame trade. So it can take increments of 30 minutes for the trade to play out. So I'm going to always trade smart. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm looking for a setup. Think about when you're posting on social media. Your picture that you post is clear. It's the same thing when you're plugging in a trade. Make sure that the picture that you're looking at is clear. If you can't see what you need to see, then don't plug in. So for example, let me let me find something real smooth, like, like a W pattern. Let's go nuts. What was that cat JPY created a W pattern? Built it early. That was my near this morning. Um let me go to our time frame. Here we go, right here. Let's see something clean. I got you. Okay, here we go, right here. So if it's clear, it makes it easier for you to trade. Look out, look down, up, down, up. That's a W that we can see that as clean as day. Remember how we said history always repeats itself, right? When we look to the left, the left is the past. When we look straight to the left, this is a place that we have bought from prior. Look, when it came here last time, it bought up, came back to the same place, and then bought up again. History always repeats itself. So there will be more calls. I'll show you how to use a TDI. I have, course, I have a course on a TDI. I have a course on the whole thing, just so you can understand trading on your own level. On So you can come to the chart when you feel like it. Can you tell us what your training days are? Got you. I like to go. Okay, I got you. Um, we're still trying to figure out the schedule. But right now, because I know there's so many people that need help, I'm pretty much just hopping on almost every day. Tomorrow, I'm traveling to Vegas. Um, I still may get on tomorrow to, to help out, right? Um, I'm still going to be dropping content for y'all to, to help y'all. I'm going to have... I'm creating a free course for y'all so y'all can have some... some um, content to look at. I have recruiting tools and ways to recruit to build a team. Nice. Hey, now Vegas in the building, right? I want to see every last one of y'all succeed. 
but it's up to us as individuals to make it happen for ourselves. We got to use the tips and tricks that what people are using to, that's working. The video I just posted inside the chats, that's closing people already out the gate. I just closed one off the same video. Where would you drop the information? Okay, I will drop it in the chats. I'm also getting a, a chat together. So um, I'm going to put a not like a separate community, but in order for those that want to learn and get on the call that I'm having, I have a chat that I'm going to be posting in and so forth. Yeah, it'll be a messenger. Um, so just, just hit me directly and then we can map it out for you for sure. Or any of you guys that, that want to, you know I'm saying, get on extra calls. I have what chats where, so Facebook. Um, let me go ahead and stop the recording so it's not that long. It's already 